Hi everyone and welcome back to Water House Hall. This quick video is uh, about restoring or repairing quick connect coupling for airlines. As I mentioned in my previous video, we, we, we didn't have a water trap on our airline. And what that meant is we had water sitting in the line. Even when we drained the line down, there's always going to be a certain amount of moisture left, left behind. Um, and unfortunately what's happened is it obviously had corroded the inside, of the, in, the internals of those quick couplers to the point that each of them, and I've got three, each of them was leaking slightly. This video just shows you how quick and easy it is to open them up, clean them up, put them back together and allow them to seal successfully again. So I hope you enjoyed. It's uh, again very different to what we normally do, but I'm sure that some of you certainly would be interested in, uh, in how to do this and really to see how easy it is because it really is straightforward. Hope you enjoyed. Here we go. Now one of the issues I've had is my I've been losing air pressure on the compressor. Probably um, if you if you leave it charged, um, sitting at about eight bar, and after about two hours, the compressor will kick in. Um, I think it's set to kick in at about six and a half bar. So losing about one and a half bar of pressure in roughly two hours. And one what we found after a lot of kind of trying to track it down was these at uh, the actual quick coupler is leaking inside here now I've I've repaired the other two but this is the third one and I thought I'd, uh, I'd video this for you in case you encounter a similar thing but these you can actually take them apart there is a little o-ring inside which if you needed to you can replace uh, but as you'll find or as you'll see uh, when we do this the o-ring is absolutely fine, there's just a little bit of corrosion on the seat that it um, seals against. Now, that corrosion I can only put down to the moisture that we've got in or have had in the, in the system. Now, what you've got is at the underneath here, or if you pull this ring back, you've got a snap ring let me turn it so you can see the opening. I think you can see it there. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. But there's a, a snap ring in here. Now I don't have a snap ring plier small enough to to get that out. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull it out with a screwdriver, which isn't it isn't difficult. Uh, excuse me, is not difficult. He says. Well, the other two weren't difficult. Put it that way. Basically, you just got to get under the under the edge, which is easier said than done. There you go, and it just lifts up slightly, and then you can actually just walk it off. You can literally just walk it off, and it, it all it is is a piece of spring wire. Now that that's off, this will come off, but you do have to just. Um, manipulate it over. You'll see inside there's these two rods and you just have to work that cover off, off of those rods. But again, it's relatively easy. Then you push down on this washer which is sitting on top of a spring and these rods will then just slide out. Now obviously be careful that the spring doesn't go flying when you release this. Uh, keep attention on it, keep a hold of it and bring it off gently and that's it basically you've got a spring and a little brass washer that sits on top of it. Right now that's the main part or the, certainly that's the top and that's the bit that um, connects the or holds the air, nozzle, the air hose in there when you when you clip it in and then when you push that outer ring out, it releases those those two bars, so the bars are sitting in there, they release, and when they release, they drop, they ride up this um, angle, this chamfer here, and that pulls them away and allows the quick coupler to come out. And that's basically a quick coupler mechanism. 
Right, now the next bit is to get this off, take this out, and it's basically threaded inside here. There is no easy way to hold this other than to put it in the vise and turn it out. So what I've got is a piece of, no, it's not it, where's it gone? I've got this piece of rubber that I use. I just put that around just old car tube at, um, yeah. Put that around it and then tighten that in the vise. You're going to get as low as you can. So you're getting as much grip in the vise as possible. Grab a shifting spin and a hope this one's going to be big enough and gently turn that off and you might need to tighten the vise a little bit more and just keep tightening the vise until that turns off This one seems to be fighting me. The other two were a lot easier. There we go. And again, there is a spring in here, so do be careful. Just hold on to it. It's not massive spring, but it, it is in there. Now, you can see the corrosion. And again, the only thing I can put that down to is water in the in the air and look at that spring I mean it's it is just surface rust um, but rust nonetheless now what I do with this there's the o-ring um, and if I just take this out of the vase I can show you so that has to seat or seal on the seat over here and as you can see, that's basically very, it's very rough. It feels like sandpaper. So it's going to struggle to seal. And that's why we're leaking air out there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in my wood lathe. Uh, just grip it very lightly in the, uh, for the small forge or chuck that I've got. And I'm just going to clean inside there just to clean that seat up. Primarily, I'll use, um, I actually use this little screwdriver initially just to get most of the, um, the gun off and then use a very fine sandpaper inside, inside there just to smooth that, uh, especially the ceiling face, which you'll, when, you, when we get in there, you'll see it's actually a chamfer, a slight chamfer. So that's the, main, the first job. The second job is just to clean this up as best we can. There's not a lot we can do without damaging that O-ring. And I've, uh, unfortunately, I've not been able to find these O-rings easily locally. So... I can order them, but I obviously wanted to get the job done today. So what we'll do, we'll give us a light brush with a brass wire brush. Um, being careful not to damage the O-ring, but just to get the, the, the majority of this off. Um, soak it in oil, or just cover it in oil, a very light oil. And then we'll put it all back together, and that seems to seems to do the job. And as I say, I've done two of these already. This is the, the third and last one. Right, so we'll move over to the lathe now and uh, and get this cleaned up. Um, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so what we do is we we just open this chuck a bit and we pop that inside. There, we can't get too deep because we've got these outer jewels, which we don't want. I don't want to catch my hands, my fingers on them. This is brass, so you don't want to do. You don't want to go crazy with it. You don't want to do it too tight. And then we go on a slow speed. The slowest speed that the lathe will do. And we, all we want to do is just lightly take the corrosion out. And I'm hoping that you can see what I'm doing. Be handy to have compressed air now, but 
So all I've done, I've just taken the top off the of the corrosion, which is um, good enough. Now what I'm going to do, just with a bit of a very, I think this is 120. I think it's 120 grit emery cloth. Emery cloth. I'm just going to clean that up. And as a final polish, what I found is the ball on the end of this chucky actually fits just fits inside there with the emery cloth around it. So we put that in there, we force it in, and let it just do a final polish on that seat. And that gives me a nice clean seat. There's a little bit of pitting on it still. I think I might just go a little bit more on that. And there you go. That's given us a nice surface for that uh, O-ring to seal on. We'll pop that out. Well, hang on, before I do that, I uh, just want to clean up these three. While we'll get it in the lathe. So there, there is a, a Loctite product on these threads, so you do need to clean them up. But I found that it comes off quite easily with the wire brush and obviously that's just a small wire brush there is just one point there that's not coming off so we'll just take a pick and just scrape that there we go And that's it. So we can pop that out now. And there we go. Let me see what I'm looking at here. Hopefully you can see there a lovely clean surface for the O-ring to, to seat on. The other thing while we're here at the lay, the other thing that we can do, the, the bottom half, we're just going to try and clean that up and get these threads clean. Right now, for the thread, what I use, I use this pick, and as I say, just by hand, I'll just turn the, the lathe with the point of the pick in the thread and a light pressure, which basically lifts the locked up material that they had in there. And that's basically it. There's still a few bits in there, so we'll just do that again. I find that it does tend to come out in in chunks. It's actually quite brittle. Okay, and you want to be careful not to dig into the, the wall of the thread too much. Otherwise it just won't seal properly again. Obviously we're going to put another sealant on here. It's another Loctite um, product. And then what I'll do, I'll run it in the lathe just with a wire brush just to clean off any small particles on that thread. But again, 
just very lightly. And that's it. Okay, back at the valves. So I've got this, this little brass uh, bristled brush and all I'm going to do is just lightly try and clean off as much of this corrosion as I can without damaging the o-ring. No. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to soak that in a little in a light oil for about half an hour, and then we'll come back. Okay, these uh, components have now been soaking in this light oil. It's um, Duck Oil is the brand. It's um, what most of you will probably know is WD-40. It's a very very similar product. So we'll just take everything out. There we go, and um, we'll give everything a good wipe, get it nice and, well, mostly dry. And once we've got all these nice and dry, we could, we'll, we'll start putting it all back together. It's pretty much the same, well, the reverse of how we took it apart. Um, no great surprises there, I guess. But the only difference now, of course, is that we need to put some kind of sealant on this thread. Now, I've got a product. It's a Loctite product. It's um, Loctite SR5331, and it's a thread sealant. It's basically a silicon-based thread sealant, which has the equivalent of PTFE fibers inside it. Uh, specifically formulated, actually, for plastic couplings, uh, but it seems to work just as well on, on brass and, um, and that kind of thing as well. So I'm going to use that. I've, I use, I've used it for pretty much all of the threaded connections for my whole compressed air um, system. Okay, so this is the Loctite product I was talking about, as you can see, SR5331, thread sealant. And it um, comes in a tube, um, it does have a nozzle, but to be honest, I don't use a nozzle because in, every time you uh, finish the job, you, you need to clean the nozzle out, otherwise you can't reuse it. So it seems a bit, bit pointless, really. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to put, I'm going to put that base in the vase. Now that uh, spring goes on goes in there with the um, o-ring on it and then basically all you do well I mean, it's pretty obvious right you just put a little bit of the stuff on the thread it doesn't need to be very thick that's enough and then screw it together. Now once this is in, you they say to leave it for half an hour to set, um, which obviously isn't too bad, uh, but they do say it'll be fully set after 24 hours. Now, what I'm going to do is just wipe all the excess off because we don't want any of that mucking up the works. And then we'll tighten it down. Okay. So again, we use our rubber, a piece of rubber just to protect it. Again, we want it to be pretty tight, but we don't want to break the thing. And then just nip this down nice and tight, enough so that it won't leak essentially. 
and that's that's it. So that's that part. Now what we'll do just put the top back together. So the first thing is the um, the spring, the big spring. So that goes over there. Then we have this brass washer and that is held in by these rods one in there and one on this side there we go so those two sit in there like that then we bring this the cover over and again you just have to manipulate it over those rods like that and then we have our snap ring and again we just have to work it back in and it basically snaps itself back into place and that's it that's the job done well there you go so really as you can see it's there's nothing to it it's straightforward um, just you know be careful that that um, that snap ring that's the, the, the bit that you know uh, could hurt you um, be careful with that but honestly they're not it's not that tight uh, just a little bit of um, persuasion and that comes off reasonably easy once that's off it's, it's pretty straightforward. Make sure you watch out, you know, don't let the springs go flying, but I mean, again, they're not, they're not under massive tension and it's really not difficult to do. Cleaning it up, I mean, any amount of cleaning, if you don't have a laser like I have, you can use a drill, you can use a, a drill press, uh, and if you need, if you don't even have any of those, even just putting a little bit of sandpaper in there on the end of a, like the end of a screw of a pencil um, would, would help. Anything like that would uh, would do the job. You want to make the, the most important thing is to get the seat clean. Everything else is kind of by the by. Um, you want to make sure that the O ring is still okay. In my case, all of them were still absolutely fine. Um, and beyond that, as long as the springs are still okay and they're not corroded too badly, you can reuse them. Um, I'm hoping now that we've got the water trap in line that we're not going to have the same problem again. Hopefully, not too soon. Um, but if we do, again, it's easy enough just to pop it open and clean them up. So look, I hope that's been enjoyable. I hope uh, it's been interesting. I, uh, maybe some of you have learned something. That's what this channel is all about. And uh, yeah, have a go. It's really not difficult. Okay, everyone. Thanks for that. Thanks for watching. And uh, share with your friends if, uh, if you think that they would be interested as well. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers for now.